Here's a simple true or false question. Babies born underweight are less likely to survive if the mother smoked during pregnancy. Now most people would say this is obviously true. In fact studies have shown that it's actually false. It's called the smoking birth weight paradox and in particular in a study of 15,000 births in San Francisco in 1959 it was shown that babies born underweight are more likely to survive if the mother smoked during pregnancy. So does this mean that mothers who are likely to give birth to underweight babies should take up smoking? Well, many people do actually make recommendations of that sort when looking at this kind of result because that's what it intuitively seems to suggest. But this is a fundamental misunderstanding of risk arising from failure to consider the observed data in its full causal context. Indeed, it wasn't until 2006 that the causal explanation of the paradox was really discovered. Now, we can explain the causal paradox in a causal Bayesian network model, which I'm going to do here in a gene of risk. So in the San Francisco study, the factors for which we had data were whether or not the mother was a smoker, whether or not the baby was born underweight, and whether or not the baby survives. We can see that overall the probability that the baby survives is quite high. Most mothers are not smokers and most babies are not born underweight. But what we can do with this model is to show what the study showed by restricting the birth weight to babies which are born underweight. And incidentally, when I enter observations into this model, I specific values, it's going to automatically update the probability calculations. And it's going to do that because I'm going to click this auto update feature in a gene risk. So let's just show you that. So for underweight babies, we can see that the probability that the baby survives has gone down from 96% to 89%, which is what you'd expect. So when you restrict the study to underweight babies, the survival rate goes down. And now we're going to show, again, what the study showed from this by comparing the smokers and the non-smokers. So for non-smokers, so we're going to enter smokers false here, what we're interested in is the survival rate. Now, the survival rate has gone down from 89 to 87%, so it's actually gone down for non-smokers. And for smokers, it goes up to 90%. So there you can see this apparently counterintuitive result that a mother smoking during pregnancy, in the case of underweight babies, leads to the baby more likely surviving than if the mother did not smoke. If we do the same thing again with smokers against non-smokers without fixing the birth weight as underweight, then we can see a difference. Because for non-smokers, probably the baby survives now gone up to 97% because the baby is less likely to be born underweight. And in the case of a smoker, the baby is much more likely to be born underweight and the probability of survival now has gone down to 94%. So there we've got the result flipped between smokers and non-smokers in the case where we haven't fixed the birth weight of the baby. So what's going on here? When people see this, they just think that something's been fiddled here, but no, so this is simply what the data is showing. And of course, what is actually missing here is the full causal context. This gives part of the causal context that whether you smoke or not does influence the birth weight. And of course, both smoking and birth weight influence the survival rate, but there's something critical which is missing here, which I'll now show you. It's the missing factor of whether or not the baby has a congenital birth defect. Now critically, this birth defect factor is a more important influence on whether or not the baby survives than both birth weight and smoker. It's babies who are born with birth defects are the ones who are least likely to survive. Babies born with birth defects incidentally are also more likely to be underweight. We just look at the impact of the birth defect, the survival rate goes down to 73% here, and the probability of the baby's underweight goes up to 23%. It's having a massive impact. And of course, that impact was hidden before. And it's, it's that hidden impact which is, explains the paradox completely, as I'll now show you. First of all, without putting the constraint on birth weight, let's see the difference between smokers and non-smokers. Look what happens when I enter true here. Probability of birth defect increased for smokers. 
probability of underweight went up to 20% and the probability of survival went down to 94%. Key thing is both this and this increased. For non-smokers, we get the opposite effect. The probability of the baby being born underweight dropped to 7%, the probability of birth defect dropped to 9% and the overall probability of survival went up to 97%. So without the constraint on birth weight, we see that smoking is a genuine risk to baby survival because it influences negatively both of these factors. However, simply by restricting the study to babies who are underweight, that the mother in those cases is more likely to be a smoker because that distribution has changed. But let's now again compare smokers and non-smokers. There's a smoker then the most likely explanation for baby being underweight is the fact that this is a smoker. So although the probability of birth defect increased, it didn't increase by that much. And well, of course, the probability that the baby survives still drops, but not by so much when you compare it now with the non-smokers. Now with a non-smoker, given the baby is born underweight, what is the possible explanation for the baby being underweight? Well, it can't be a smoker. Therefore, it's much more likely to be the birth defect. And here is the core cause of the paradox. Because the baby is born underweight and the mother is a non-smoker, the most likely explanation for the underweight baby is a congenital birth defect being much more likely than in the case for smokers. And because that is so much higher, that is the reason why the probability of survival drops more than in the case for smokers.